Hey everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use the keyboard in Bambulib. First I'm going to carry out a transformation in normal speed and afterwards we will have a slow walkthrough. So today you're going to learn how to navigate between input fields, how to navigate inside of drop downs and then how to carry out transformations using the keyboard if you're new to the keyboard and if you're more advanced to the keyboard. I'm going to show you how to use a keyboard doing a group by transformation. So more specifically, I'm going to group by the p-class column and sex, and then I want to compute the min, max, and mean of the age column and of the fair column, which contains the ticket price. And I want to rename the result into df underscore aggregation. Let's carry out the transformation. So I'm going to do a group by p-class and sex. I want to have the min max and mean of h and fair and I want to rename the result into df aggregation. So that was quite fast but now let's walk through things a bit more slowly. Before we get started using the keyboard let's explore the main UI elements that you encounter when doing a transformation. So essentially there are five main components. The first one is a single select dropdown, which you can recognize from the black triangle on the right side. The second one is a multi select dropdown, which is basically a single select dropdown where you have this tri black triangle missing. Then we have buttons, such as the add calculation, the execute, and the close button. We have text input fields, where you can enter free text. And we have checkboxes, such as the Live Code Export checkbox. Okay, now let's learn how to navigate using the keyboard. If you are inside of an element, such as that multi-select dropdown here, you can move on to the next input field using tab. And if you want to go back to the previous input, you hit shift tab. All right, so let's do that again. With tab you go forwards and with shift tab you go backwards. If you are inside of a dropdown, you can navigate up and down the option list using the arrow down key and the arrow up key. Okay, now let's learn how to use the keyboard if you're new to the keyboard. There are only two additional keys that you need to know. With enter, you select an element and with space, you push a button or toggle a checkbox. So in the case where we now do a group by, I wanted to have a group by P class and sex. So I navigate down to P class and hit enter. And then I navigate down to sex and again hit enter. So I'm done here and I want to move on to the next input field. Now I wanted to have the min, max, and I wanted to have mean of the age column, which is down here, and of fair. If I now hit tab, I move on to the button, but I don't need that, so I continue going to the single select dropdown, and here I want to have I want to create a new table. So I can hit enter and to get to the next input field I hit tab again. Now I'm inside of the free text input field so I change its name to df aggregation. And then I navigate my way down to the execute button and hit space to execute the transformation. Alright so that was a beginner's walkthrough. If you feel more comfortable using the keyboard there are certain tricks that you can learn to be in faster. If you are inside of a dropdown, you can narrow down the option list by starting to type. So in my case, I was searching for the first element, which was P class in my case. So I started typing P. And you see now that the option list has narrowed down and that all elements that match a P are highlighted in yellow. From that point, you have two options of completing your search. Either you use the arrow keys to go to the element that you were looking for, 
or you start adding another character until it's the only option left you were looking for. So if I start adding a C, then P class is the only option left. Well, in any case, whenever you are in search mode, you can now auto-complete your text by hitting tap. In my case, P class is right now selected in gray, so I can hit tap to auto-complete my selection. Next, I wanted to have the sex column, so I started typing SE and then I hit X to make it very specific, and then I hit tap again to auto-complete that selection. Okay, the same logic applies in this dropdown, so I wanted to have the min, the max, and note how I'm just typing MA and then hit tap to complete that selection, and the mean of H, and of fair. Okay. Now there's a second trick. Whenever you are inside of a single select dropdown, you can actually select an element in default mode using tab. So right now I don't need to type TA in order to autocomplete that selection. I can already autocomplete an empty selection whenever it's highlighted. So in my case, new table is highlighted in gray, so I can hit tab to select that element. And you see there is another advantage that comes with that. So as I've selected the element with tab, I've also moved on directly to the next element. So the second trick is when you are inside of a single select dropdown, hit tab to select and move on to the next input field. And finally, the last trick, when you are inside of a text input field, such as in this one down here, you can execute the transformation by hitting enter. So whenever you are inside of a text input field, hit enter to execute a transformation.